Good day, my friends. I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. It feels so good to be out in the forest, out in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by nothing but trees and ferns and quiet. Even though I have adventures up every single week, it has been roughly two weeks since I've been out for a trip, and that's because I just got back from Florida, I had some family things to address, and at the same time, as I mentioned in the previous adventure, I surprised Susie with tickets to the Universal Halloween Horror Night thing. So we got to spend a couple days down there playing around, and we had a ton of fun. So I just got back from Florida, now I'm in the woods, ready to film a trip. After being surrounded by people, doing a ton of talking, having a good time, I am ready for some peace and quiet. I am ready to spend time with you all. I just made it out here to the location that I'm going to camp at. The funny thing is, like the weather is really, really nice. And the forecast was for like really bad weather. Supposedly today it was supposed to be like cloudy, rainy all day long, thunderstorms. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's gonna happen or not. Right now I'm seeing nothing but blue sky, there's sunshine. Luckily, it is cool. It's about 62 degrees and there's a nice breeze coming through the forest. In other words, we're talking about perfect conditions. Because the conditions are so nice, I really do need to think carefully about what I'm going to do. Time-wise, it's only like one o'clock. There's no clouds in the sky, but yet the forecast was calling for storms today and tonight. Because of that, I'll go ahead, set up my tarp real quick, just in case I need it later on. Having it set up prevents me from like running around camp when a storm is coming in or rain's falling or something like that, so. I will be proactive in that regards. By the way, everyone, thank you all so much for keeping the secret from Susie about Universal Studios. She was completely surprised and had an awesome time. So did I. I have a pretty funny story to share with you all that took place there. It was an interaction that I had with another guest at a hotel. It was funny. Anyways, I'm going to set up the tarp real quick, and as soon as I have that done, I'll bring you all back. But folks, let's get to work. All right, folks, the tarp has been set up. Now let's talk about this real quick. I have it set up rather high and I have it set up for airflow. Let's say the weather conditions change, I can lower this thing down and basically hunker down underneath it. Here's a pro tip for you all when it comes to setting up a tarp. If at all possible, do not use tent stakes. Use natural elements that you find out in the forest that are anchored to the ground. For an example, tree roots, large rocks, trees, and so on. Tent stakes are oftentimes the weakest point when it comes to a tarp setup. Trust me, everybody, I've learned the hard way about this, so take my advice. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've gone out for a trip, I've set up a tarp using tent stakes, the winds pick up, and all of a sudden those tent stakes are flying out of the ground. That's why I suggest using natural elements, if at all possible. And that really is the key, if at all possible. You do your best, you forget the rest. Anyways, here's another pro tip for you all. You all can see here that I've attached a line from one end of this tarp all the way to the other side. And now I have a ridge line. And it's with this ridge line that I can attach clothing, I can dry stuff out, I can attach other gear that I don't want laying on the ground, I can even attach a lantern, a headlamp, a light source. There's plenty that I can attach to this line. And in the end, it's going to be very beneficial.
this my friends is absolutely perfect there's a nice cool breeze coming in it feels incredible at the same time we're beginning to get quite a few clouds up in the sky when I first got here it was nothing but blue sky but now we're surrounded by some puffy white and somewhat dark clouds yeah I don't know we shall see <laughs> who knows what's going to happen the last couple of weeks here in the mountains of North Carolina it's been rather cool but that's going to change basically starting tomorrow for like one week it's going to get warm like summertime temperatures for the most part highs around 75 that's pretty warm for this time of year now luckily after that there's a major cool down coming in fact the last forecast that I saw basically a week from now highs in the 30s we're so close to freezing everybody you never know snow could be right around the corner. While I would love to sit here and make a cup of coffee, I best go set up my tent for this evening. I'm starting to see some dark clouds. We might as well just get this out of the way. We'll get camp fully set up. Then we'll kick back and relax a little before going back to work, gathering a bunch of firewood so we can have a fire tonight. As you all have seen, I just got the tent set up. Now this tent is interesting. This is something that I've wanted to test out for a while and I decided to take it with me on this trip, even though it's somewhat of a gamble. I purchased this tent off of Timu and this is without a doubt the cheapest tent I've ever purchased. I got this for 50 bucks. Now this is an interesting aspect when it comes to this tent here. You can see that the logo is Grand Canyon and the name of the tent is the Apex One. When I purchased this off of Timu, the logo was blurred out. So I did a little bit of research and I found that Grand Canyon is like a European company and I am shocked to say this, the reviews on this tent are not bad. Grand Canyon sells this tent for $100. Now this is the interesting thing, right? The catch. So I purchased this off of Timu. Timu is blurring out the logo. Does Grand Canyon know that their tent is being sold on that site? So this is what I'm thinking is happening here. The manufacturer of that tent is turning around and selling that tent on Timu at a greatly reduced reduced price. On Timu, this tent costs 50 bucks. Grand Canyon is selling it for 100. Does Grand Canyon know that Timu is doing this? I have no idea, but I did send Grand Canyon an email this morning, so hopefully we'll get a response sometime soon. Stay tuned to the channel. I cannot wait to see what they have to say about this. Getting away from that aspect, I do like the overall design of this tent. This is a one-person tent. It has a huge door. There's a ton of space inside of this. It's covered in mesh, and the airflow is surprisingly really, really good. If this tent turns out to be waterproof, this would be the best budget-friendly tent I've personally ever seen. I've seen tents, budget tents from other companies that cost more than this, 
that are way, 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 way worse. Anyways, I'm excited to spend the night in this tent. Is it going to rain though? I really don't know. I am beginning to see some thunderheads out here behind the forest. I could just barely make them out. Anything is possible today, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Folks, I cannot believe how good it feels today. Right now, it's almost four o'clock. The temperature up here, we gotta be around 60 degrees, something or other. The breeze is coming through the forest. The humidity isn't that high. It feels incredible, to be honest. Perfect conditions. With the weather being so good right now, it's best not to waste it. So let's gather some dry firewood so we can have a fire later on tonight. I have a new wood stove with me. This one, it's interesting. And I'll tell you this much, it's from a company called Fire Maple. As you all can see here, I've collected a pretty nice pile of firewood. The thing is, most of this stuff is really small, really thin, so it will burn fast. Anytime that I'm collecting natural resources, even if it's just firewood, I'm conservative. I wanna leave plenty of wood behind, not only for myself, but for others as well. My friends, it is now officially coffee time. Speaking of the time, it is 4.45 and the weather conditions continue to be absolutely amazing. <laughs> Cheers to you all. Cheers to the weather. Oh yeah. I told you all about going down to Florida, roughly. I'll tell you all some details about that. So to start off here, I have a whole bunch of shout outs to give. And unfortunately, it's not really all that there was or that there is. Going throughout Florida, even being in the airports, it was just wild, right? I felt like a celebrity. Like everywhere I went, I was shaking hands with somebody. I was getting hugs in other places. That's not weird, but I was getting hugs at other times. How about that? Somebody would notice me and they'd be like, oh my gosh, it's Luke. You know, and I'd be shaking hands or giving hugs or whatever. And then like other people are staring at me and they're thinking like, who is that guy? He doesn't look like anything special. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, everybody, you all are so cool. And I really do appreciate everybody. Everybody is so respectful. You know, it's like people would come up to me. Sometimes we would talk about gear. Sometimes it was short and sweet. But um, I tried to get as many names as I could. But unfortunately, I mean, we're in passing, we're going past each other. Oh, hey, oh yeah, hey, it's good to see you, nice to meet you, whatever. 
And so like sometimes I didn't get names. The very first interaction that we had was like first thing right at the airport. We went to get our tickets and we were introduced to Gene and Carol. You both are fantastic. They bumped us up to first class for the flight down to Florida, which was really, really cool. So we had first class seats on that one, on that flight. And the seats themselves laid down, which was of a huge benefit. And I'll tell you why in just a second. The next individual that we ran into, his name was Jake. Basically, the plane was boarding. I was standing in line. Now, here's the unfortunate thing. I had been up for like 34 hours straight because I had to get a ton of work done before I could hop on this flight and go down to Florida. So I'm in that line and I'm practically a zombie. I hear like my name being called. I look over and I'm just half asleep right? Anyway, so he introduced himself. He said that he was starstruck. To be honest, I was equally as anxious. <laughs> it was really nice to meet you, man. Thank you so much. And I do apologize if I seemed off. If I did, it's because I was. Now going back to the first class seats that we got from Gene and Carol, that was so nice. Being able to lay down, even though I want to say the flight was only for like an hour and 20 minutes, I was able to lay down, get some sleep, and as soon as we landed in Florida, I felt great. And that night, <laughs> we arrived, I don't remember what time it was, I don't know, let's say 12 o'clock in the afternoon, Susie and I stayed up, I don't know, until 3 o'clock that night doing like the Halloween Horror Nights and whatnot. I think the park closed at 2, and then we had to go back to the hotel, so it was a good 3.30 by the time we got into the hotel and to sleep. There was countless people at the park, and I have to be honest, the park was so crazy, so chaotic, I can't remember anybody's names, and I really do apologize. Imagine like, having a conversation with someone, and there's like a thousand people around you making noise and talking and stuff. So, we saw countless people at the Halloween Horror Nights, and that was so much fun. Going back to the airport, I also met Brian. I didn't get to tell you this, but thank you so much for your service. There was Maria, Paula, and Allison. It was great to meet you all. Banks, Corey, and Drew, it was nice to meet you all as well. Those were all of the names I was able to write down and remember. But everyone, it was super, super nice to meet you all. Thank you all so much for everything. The Outdoor Gear Review viewers are the absolute best. Now, before I end the shout outs, I wanna give a shout out to Jeremy. Congrats on working so hard for improving your health. I respect that, mate. Not everybody can make changes to their lives and change their health around, but you have done it. I wanna give a shout out to Tammy. I hope you're doing well. I totally forgot Jonathan. He saw me at Universal Studios, but I didn't see him.
It is now 10 minutes past 6 o'clock, and it will be dark in about an hour. Dinner is rehydrating. What I have here is a Peak Refuel Beef and Chili Mac meal. Now, normally I really like these, but there's something about this one that smells funny. It smells funny, and it looks funny. Yeah, I mean, it's still within date by two years. So I'm going to let it rehydrate and then go from there. But as it stands right now, I may not eat this. Unfortunately, everybody, I could not eat that meal. That is a risk that I'm not willing to take. I'd much rather be hungry tonight than have diarrhea or be throwing up. Something about that meal is off. It looks like there's chunks of cheese in it or something. I mean, it smells like a dirty shoe and it tastes like one too. I gave it a shot, I spit it out. I'm not going to gamble on that. Now, luckily, I do have some extra snacks with me. Some trail mix and some spis... I can never say this. Pistachios. There we go. <laughs> if you've seen most of my videos, you know that I have a hard time with this word. Pistachios. I don't know. When it comes to food in the backcountry, you do not take any chances. Something was off with that meal, I'm not gonna eat it. You don't wanna play games with diarrhea or vomiting when you're out in the middle of nowhere. That can make you never wanna go camping ever again. I've been there, trust me. There's nothing like having diarrhea in the middle of a rainstorm and there's no place to go except for out in the woods, getting soaking wet, super dirty. Oh man, that sucks so bad. <laughs> If you spend enough time in the outdoors, eventually you'll have some awful experience just like that. Through hikers, I'm looking at you. You all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> as far as the time goes, it's almost seven. It's getting dark. It looks like it might be getting foggy too. After I eat this and the trail mix, we'll get a fire going and that's how the evening will come to an end. Almost forgot, I have a story to tell you all. So this is ridiculous, but funny at the same time. Susie and I were staying at a hotel there at Universal Studios. We're on the 12th floor. So one morning, actually I think it was the day that we were leaving, we go to the elevator. There's another couple there getting on. So we let them get on first, we hop in, and we're going down. On the trip down, we're making small idle chit chat. Then we get down to the lobby. I look at him, he looks at me, and I'm like, oh, go ahead. And he's like, oh no, no, you guys go ahead. And then like, I look at him and I'm like, why don't we let the ladies go first? That's when I look out of the elevator and Susie and that guy's wife, they're already gone. I don't know how much time passed, but it felt like an eternity. And then I was like, okay, I have an idea. How about we leave at the exact same time? 
And he's like, okay, good idea. So then both of us cram out of that elevator door at the same time. <laughs> I have my backpack on, he has some stuff. To me, it was incredibly funny. I wish Susie was here because I wonder if it was funny to her or not. <laughs> the ladies were probably thinking that we were ridiculous, but I don't know. <laughs> we both wanted to be honorable and let everybody else go first, you know? But, um, yeah. <laughs> and of course, when we get down to the lobby, the lobby is packed full of people waiting to use the elevator. There's him and I just staring at each other. Oh no, you go ahead. <laughs> that may very well be the worst story of all time, but it was funny to me. It still is. I don't know. All I know is that when I got off the elevator, crammed through that door with the other dude, we were both laughing our ass off. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right, it's fire time, folks. Let's get this going. Now this is nice folks, when it comes to the fire maple stove, putting it together was rather simple. The bottom heat plate is massive. I don't think I've ever seen a wood stove with such a large thick heat plate before. Now I did put some rocks on the ground to get this off of the ground because without a doubt this would scorch the earth. It is so nice, folks. Peaceful, quiet, I'm still dry, that's a first. I'm not sure how much longer that's going to last though. Like right outside of the forest here, it's so foggy you can't see 10 feet. But that fog is yet to come into the forest. A few moments ago, the fire kind of died out. Before I can replenish the wood here, I was noticing some flashing. There's a thunderstorm somewhere around here. This is kind of like the curse of wintertime right here. I mean, it starts getting dark very early, especially as we go into wintertime, like it'll get dark at five o'clock. So what do you do from five o'clock on, right? You can't possibly gather enough firewood, in most cases anyway, to have a fire like all night long. Good evening, everybody. It is now 
I'm inside of the tent going to call it a night. It did get foggy and it's beginning to drizzle just a little bit. At the same time, I'm seeing some flashes of lightning. It's still pretty far away, but it's definitely closer than before. I'm going to say goodnight. I will see you all in the morning unless something interesting happens. But good night for now, folks. See you soon. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Time-wise, it is now 5.18. Got up at 4.30, ready to rock and roll. One, I slept great. It did not rain last night, but the conditions were absolutely perfect. Now, at some point in time, it was rather late. A strong storm popped up around us. I mean, it was close. We could see the flashes, but it just went away, and it did not rain here. We are up in the fog this morning. It's not super, super thick. It's not thick enough for it to be like dripping off of the trees or anything like that. It's just more than anything, it's just coming and going. I wanna say about three o'clock I woke up, looked outside and I could see everything from the moonlight. But now it's a little bit foggy. Point number two to mention is that I slept great inside of that tent. The Grand Canyon Apex one that I bought off of Timu. Unfortunately, I didn't get to waterproof test it. I'll have to do that in the future. But for a first run, for $50, I like that tent a lot. I've definitely seen worse. Point three, unfortunately, I left this gas can on yesterday. It was very, very slight. But when I came over here this morning and I looked at the can, I noticed that it was covered in sweat. And that's because the can is super cold because it has been releasing gas all night long. 
So with this stove here, the valve is very finicky. You turn it a little bit and it's releasing gas. And well, there you go. My bad. That's life. Luckily, there was enough gas here to make a cup of coffee. Unfortunately, I went through almost an entire can of gas. At 4.30, I got up and I was able to check the weather. Thanks to like the thick cloud cover and the fog, I have signal service. Anyways, I checked the weather and it says later on today, there's gonna be a good chance of rain. Because of that, I'm thinking about heading out to Lone Wolf Mountain. I'll leave here and I'll set up this tent. That way I could waterproof test it. Plus, it's a good excuse for me to go work on Lone Wolf Mountain. Fall is coming on strong. That means that there's leaves all over the place, so I have to take care of the road. Also, I need to open up all of the ditches there because fall storms are on the way, and that means a ton of rain. And you never know. We may get some sort of tropical storm or hurricane or something like that. That is my plan for the day. Also, when it comes to the cabin, did I solve the leaking by the silicone fix that I did around the window? I did not. I discovered what the issue is. After siliconing around that window, I was thinking to myself that it just didn't make any sense that it was leaking from around there. So I did a little bit of research about those windows. And on each side of the window, you have what they call weep holes. On the inside of that window frame on the track, there's this piece of rubber that goes all the way around. Underneath that piece of rubber is a track where rainwater will go and then out of those weep holes. For some reason, it's a really stupid design, but they designed it so if those weep holes get clogged up, the water inside of that track goes to the inside of the walls. And folks, that was the issue. So <laughs> I went back to the trailer, pulled out that piece of rubber, cleaned those tracks, and the problem has been solved for now. It's a really, really bad design. I love watching the fog. It's like a combination of cloud and fog at the same time. It's almost mesmerizing to stare at, to watch. There's a very slight breeze this morning. Temperature wise, it's not terribly cold. Well, my watch says 52, but at this elevation, it's even colder than that. This comes from a weather station about 2,500 feet lower than us. I would say we're in the 40s, upper 40s. Normally I use the Garmin Instinct Solar Watch, but I decided to give the Apple Ultra 2 a shot. Namely because I've received so many questions from you all about smartwatches. I figured that I better expand my knowledge of this a little bit so I can help you all out. I really do like the Garmin, but the thing is, it's very archaic. Plus, all of the smart features, kind of like this, are very, very difficult to use on the Garmin. Whereas with this Apple Watch, everything works really, really smoothly. Now, to be honest, I don't really care about the smart features, but many of you all do. So, there we go. I don't plan to review these smartwatches, and that's because there's tech channels out there that would do a much better job than I am. They are much more geeky in this area than I am, in other words. I like tech, but I don't love it. And like learning every single feature and all the ins and outs, how accurate the GPS is and all that stuff, I have no desire to do it. So again, there's better channels out there. With that being said though, I wanna be able to share information with you all. So anytime you have a question, I can answer it, or at least get you on the right path. When it comes to reviewing products, I know what my weaknesses are. Technology is a weakness. There's just so many features to these watches that I don't care about. And the truth is, I don't have time to learn it all. I don't want to. <laughs> I barely like even having my phone with me. So Let's go ahead and let's see what we have for breakfast. This will do. Let's have an oatmeal bar. That will be just enough to get the day on the way.
this peak refuel meal smells so bad. I mean, it's just the whole bag reeks and that thing is sealed up. Something was completely and totally off on it, with it, whatever, it's early. <laughs> As I mentioned yesterday, you never take any chances when it comes to food. If it's going to make you sick in the outdoors, you're putting yourself at serious risk. Don't do it. It is now almost 6 o'clock, and I think it's a good time to pack up. The coffee is almost done. It is getting super, super foggy, and that's one of the reasons why I've decided just to go ahead and pack up right now. As it stands, everything I have is nice and dry, and I really do want to keep it that way. I'm going to take this tent over to Lone Wolf Mountain, get some work done, do some testing. That is going to be very, very interesting. What do you all think? Is that tent going to leak? Comment down below. It is now 6.38 in the morning and it's time for me to say goodbye. Thank you all so much for joining me for this trip. A dry trip. This is incredibly nice. <laughs> I'm so accustomed to like going home with a ton of wet stuff and having it spread out all over the house to dry. So yeah, this is a nice change. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel quite a bit. If you want to join the Wolf Pack, you could do so. Patreon, YouTube, it is appreciated. Until next time, everyone, take care. Be well, strength and honor.